Bonjour. Aloha. Aloha. Thank you, students. Thank you, Cabela, for the invitation. It's always great to return to Hawaii, where I've been privileged to have taught uh, two times a class on indigenous librarianship. And I see three of my former students uh, here smiling. They can be smiling at me. What's going on? Uh, so we're looking at concepts of leadership that apply in indigenous situations and to indigenous people or not, you can decide. So we're going to whip through a lot of slides and maybe something will resonate with you and then I'll turn it over to some better speakers. Uh, so here's the plan. Oops, I'm going to lean back a little bit. You can, I, you can, I have to say y'all. Y'all can hear me, right? Y'all? Okay. All right, so what is it? What is leadership? The ability to show the way. And so if, if you take this and extend it, what is indigenous leadership? Using culturally based approaches to show the way. Pictures from my sister, my sister Della Noel. So who and what is an indigenous leader? And there are many metaphors that we could use. A sheltering tree, someone who dedicates, someone who has stability and confidence, all the things that I'm not. Uh, someone standing tall, someone who cares. and someone who presents himself or herself. Uh, that leader can be compared to a rock, steadfast, strong, fully committed, going the extra mile. And if you know Cavello, I don't know what, when she went to sleep last night. I think there was texting at three in the morning. Uh, you know, so someone who is always there, handling difficult situations, and also that leader can be compared to a canoe, like the canoe of my people, the birch bark canoe, the canoe, the ocean going canoes, as ensuring essential services, ensuring respect. How can you become a leader? Here are quotes from, I, I love, I love uh, quotations, uh, uh, quotation books. I teach reference, I love reference works, especially those that relate to indigenous knowledge. Uh, the highest mountain in Aotearoa, you look to those who have achieved greatness and you know it took a lifetime. I have sources at the end of this, so I tried to be a good librarian, yeah. And we receive those lessons from many sources. For my people, we have the three hills of life. And at, you are a very young, you're an infant, you're in your middle years, and your elder years. But at any of those hills or those times, you learn from others. Here's an uh, image of my son as a young, uh, young guitar player. So receive lessons from many sources and from many directions. And like na many Native people, my people, we believe learning comes to us from the four cardinal directions. And each direction get, brings a different kind of learning. And you can translate those into educational learning or spiritual learning, for example, wellness, issues of health to lead a fulfilled life. And this is a model I go to again and again in my thinking and writing, and this is the model developed by Greg Cajete, uh, who's often over here doing work. But if you take that model for leading an indigenous life, a fulfilled life as an indigenous person, you start with being, and you rotate through a cycle of actions from asking, making, having, sharing, and always celebrating. That cycle of experience and the fulfillment can be expressed in several ways that you can find your true face, your true heart and your true foundation. And I believe that's very possible within these fields, these information fields of librarianship and archival enterprise, that those help us lead our fulfilled lives. Being a good leader, someone who deserves the respect of the people and who accepts the challenge to lead that mark of true leadership. Leaders can be made. Uh, in my, pe with my people, we have clan system. We have a traditional system, and you're born into the clan system. And I'm not born into the leader clan. I'm born into the mediator clan. I'm a bear, mukwa. I like sleeping in dark places, eating a lot of berries and food. And, and then when the two competing leader clans, the cranes and the loons, you know, they're noisy. You can hear them. And sometimes they're just always talking too much. And so you need someone like Makwa or Bear to make sure everything is, t takes place and has happened and, and uh, taken care of. And so everybody has a role, and that's also part of leadership. There's no one model, then, for leadership or indigenous leadership. You learn from leaders. 
Steer the canoe carefully, lest this chief be drenched by the spray. The chief as the metaphor for the community. Organizers should not lose fact of the need to protect the people. Versatility. You can join those who join the sections of the canoe. You seek the leaders who are able to work with diverse people. My students always know much more than I do. Visioning. Uh, see there to the place where the sky reaches down. And this is a picture of one of my friends who was a speaker at one of my conferences. And I am a tall person, but Kareem Abdul-Jabbar is two feet taller. So to the place where the sky reaches down. Uh, persistence. Given time and effort, most things are achievable. And to remember that, that we all have challenges and when things don't look like they're going to happen, that things are achievable. A wish that will be met and futures that will be bright. Again, this notion of persistence as a leader. Uh, strive, and bow, if you bow your head, bow it to the highest mountain. So don't, let, don't, let, don't be defeated by uh, small issues. Risk taking, because it is only the summer rain. I think every day, I've been here two days, and I keep asking Cavella if I need an umbrella, and she just laughs. <laughs> followers, leaders make followers. And you, the, the best thing is when you have the young generation, the new people, ready to go. Uh, and recognizing that need, for that future need. The f one fern frond falls and another unfurls. What are the challenges of being a leader? You may be alone. You are responsible. You have to be sold on what's going on. You have to strive for all that balance. And you may be suddenly treated differently. Uh, there are these metaphors that we use. We use a lot on the mainland. If you, if you know native people there, the metaphor of the crabs in the bucket. And if you haven't heard it, ask and, and you'll get many versions of the same story. And then you might have heard of tall poppy syndrome as well, where the, the Tall flower is the one that gets lopped off, and so those are the risks. But there are rewards from financial to other opportunities. I'm the oldest of eight, and there are two of my sisters. I have five sisters. And then there are proph the prophecies say that we're doing what we should do. The prophecies of my people are that we are right now in the seventh generation. We are at the point of making the decisions for continuance and all evidence points that that is coming true and we're stepping into that eighth generation. So a little overview, kind of broad, but I want to hear what whoever speaks next. So miigwech, chi miigwech, thank you.